Welcome to Retro Bassin, and welcome to another episode of Stump Retro. Bassin buds from around the country and around the world have been sending in photos of lures that they need help identifying. Stick around, you are not going to want to miss these. Retro Bassin, kicking some ass in wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bass. Since we started this Stump Retro series on Retro Bassin, I've been asking you guys for photo submissions of lures that you need help identifying. Well, if I was having trouble with some of the early submissions, the lures you guys sent as of late are definitely getting more and more obscure and harder and harder to identify. Well, we're going to do our best to identify those today, but before we get into that, if this is your first time here at Retro Bassin and you like to fish it old school, talking about classic rods, reels, lures, and equipment from fishing days gone past. Well, stick around, consider subscribing, and be sure to hit that bell icon. Otherwise, you won't know we post a new video just like this one. The first submission comes to us from Bo, who sent a photo of a pretty cool lure that, at first glance, I thought I had pegged. At first glance, this bait was a dead ringer for a larger saltwater version of the Bayou Boogie, known as the Salty Boogie. I've never actually thrown the Salty Boogie, but the Bayou Boogie is one of my favorite all-time lipless crankbaits and fishes in a very different way than the traditional rattle trap style bait. They have a much different wiggle, a much different fall, and in certain applications, they can be absolutely killer for bass. I've never thrown the saltwater version of it, but this is a photo of an old school Salty Boogie in the package. And that's what I thought this bait initially was. That would have been pretty cool, except when Bo flipped it over, it says Japan on the bottom. So that one has me stumped. Obviously some sort of a Japanese version of that bait, but either way, that is a pretty cool piece of old school gold, and thanks for sharing, Bo. Bones sent a number of lures our way to identify, and the first is a crankbait, which to me looks like a Cotton Cordell Deep Big O. I did an episode on this bait a little while back where I was catching some pretty nice bass on Lake Austin, just outside of Austin, Texas. And this is a very unique version of that Big O. There's a number of different body styles and I really don't know enough about the Big O to know the rhyme or reason behind that. But this definitely looks like one of those varieties and that is definitely a fish catcher. Bo also sent a little collage of six different lures to help identify. And we'll start off with the one in the lower right that looks like a rebel crankbait of source. I don't know if that's a humpback. I can't really see, but I'm pretty sure that is a rebel crank. And that is another good little fish catcher. Just up from that looks like a cotton cordell topwater popper to the best of my recollection. And that is a bait I actually don't think I currently have in my collection. So I probably need to grab one or two of those guys. Just above that looks like a either a flatfish or a lazy Ike type crankbait. Pretty cool. Going back to the lower left looks like a spoon of some sort. And boy, uh, I really have a hard time identifying some of those old school spoons. So I'm not even going to venture a guess at that one. Just up from that looks like a head and chugger spook. That's a pretty cool one. And that looks like a very nice color. But the lure that caught my eye on this page and the one that I definitely think is the showstopper is that lure in the upper left. That to me looks like a cotton cordell near nothing in the larger size. We recently did an episode on the cotton cordell near nothing and here is the smaller, more popular version of that bait. What makes this topwater so cool in my opinion is it fishes very different from most topwaters in that it sinks when you pause it. The larger version of this probably fishes quite the same way, and I imagine that, that thing is a total killer for striped bass. So Mikey, definitely hang on to that one. Cast it if you dare. Big E thought he had me stumped with this one, and were it not for my buddy Teji over on Instagram, and I'll tell you about it in a second, 
I would not have been able to identify this worm. At first glance, this looks like one of those generic flat tail worms in that same era of the flip tail and the man's jelly worm. It seemed like just about everybody, their uncle had their own version of this bait. And to me, this was a uh, kind of a tough one to identify. Except right around the same time, my bassin bud from Japan, Teiji, posted this photo on his Instagram. If you look at the swirl pattern on the lure, I am 99% sure that what Biggie sent was a yum yum worm. Uh, that is pretty cool and just kind of by dumb luck I happened to be able to identify that one. <laughs> Big E, if you've only got one, I don't know if I'd throw it, but if you've got a dozen or so of those things, that is definitely going to be a fish catcher. Something you could throw out there on a 1 16th or 1 8th ounce weight, little 3 out worm hook, and do some damage. Well, Bass and Bug Carrie made a great find at a local flea market where she picked up these three lures for five bucks. Well, that is a pretty good deal, even though I think I'm only going to be able to identify one of the three of those baits. I'll start off with the ones I don't know. And that thing on the top, yeah, spoons have me stumped more often than not, but that is a unique looking spoon. And if any of you bass and buds out there know what it is, definitely drop it down in the comments. On the bottom, we also have a unidentified plug. And to me, this could be some sort of old school saltwater plug from maybe like a Garcia or something like that. Again, not 100% sure on it. And that one had me stumped as well. But that middle bait, I know quite well. That is a Mr. Twister top prop. And ironically enough, a bait I just picked up a few of. As the move to Florida gets more real, I'm starting to pick up some top water baits that I think we could do some damage on, on those shallow weedy lakes. And I picked up a number of these from the eBay. This is a discontinued Mr. Twister top prop. This is a pretty cool two-piece bait. The first component is a sort of floating buzz bait, if you will. Almost, eh, maybe even like a whopper plopper, right? And on the back end, it's got a single hook with a worm keeper barb on it. And inside, some of those awesome Mr. Twister split double tails. Man, you tell me, it floats, it buzzes, it rattles, it drives fish crazy. Stop and go retrieve buzz lure. You tell me that thing would not catch a bass. I love it when folks send me photos of their grandpa's tackle box. And Joe did not disappoint with this submission he sent to the show. Apparently, Grandpa was, whew, I'll say, big into walleye fishing. He has got three really classic walleye trolling baits in here. First, on the far left, you see a number of Storm Hottentots. This is a pretty cool crankbait with a metal lip. Honestly, a bait that I don't throw nearly enough, even though I've got some in my old school Umco tackle box. Next part of the tackle box would make Al Linder smile, and I see a number of old school Lindy Shadling crankbaits. I do have some of these on hand as well, and this is a pretty unique crankbait all said and done. It has got a molded in lip, which is often painted, and some pretty unique metal hook hangers. So I need to probably dust off my Shadlings. Uh, again, too many lures, too little time. And on the far right, I see a number of head and tad polys, a lure that I've thrown even less than the first two. So all said and done, a great collection of three very classic walleye baits. If you would like to submit a lure for the Stump Retro series of the channel, go ahead and hit me up on Instagram Messenger or Facebook, even though I check Facebook a pretty good bit less, and send me a lure that you would like me to help identify. And if you're looking for some more old school content, you can click right here. Otherwise, I'll see you right back here at same time, same place. Until then, keep the carp side up and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassoon.